Okay, to get started, this is a generic K40 laser right off of eBay. And a couple of things you may or may not be aware of, this orange glass here is to protect you from the actual laser. You should never open this door at any time when you're using a laser because <clears throat> lasers do radiate uh, radiation and you don't want to be around that. So just a heads up on that. The other thing is your ventilation. You want to make sure that this vents, I'm using kind of a, until I get something better, just the original vent that came with it and I just send it right out that window when I'm using it. Especially important when you're cutting acrylics and so forth. Um, other than that, this here is a custom built panel. You don't have to worry about looking on eBay for something that matches this because this is all custom and it's something you do not need. As a matter of fact, um, this really does nothing more than what the original laser came with other than allows you to turn LEDs on and laser tests and so forth that really you're never going to probably use. Now what you will use, and I think this is extremely important, is this little gadget here. I went ahead and purchased this and I just ran the actual water lines through this so as the laser turns on I can see that my water is actually running. And that's real important. And I do, this gauge does help me uh, maintain and see the temperature. So those two are important. This was an add-on. I found uh, the instructions on how to do this on YouTube, but I really felt like that was important because I never knew really if my water was running and my pumps were running when my laser was on. And this gives me a visual indication that the laser and the water um, are turned on, or at least the water's turned on and I can run the laser. Um, moving on down, I just use a normal Home Depot bucket and I just have it set up with a very simple pump that just moves the water in and out of it and sits down inside of it um, and pumps that water. Uh, this is probably one of the most important items you can get if you're going to be building flight panels. This is just a basic air pump and I, you might be able to use a fish tank pump. Um, but I bought this from a secondhand uh, thrift store for $5 and it goes to one of those um, breathing machines that you breathe in and, and you could, uh, if you have any type of uh, uh, children and so forth when they need to do breathing treatments, this is all this is. And it has a little switch that turns on here. I'll, I'll come back to why that's so important in just a minute. Over to the right of it, I use this here. This has each one of my devices plugged in the back. So I, all I have to do is turn on a master switch and I know that everything's running. One of the big mistakes you don't want to make is turning on the laser and forgetting to turn, up, turn on your water pump. So this allows me to see a light indication that it, all four items are running and everything is good. This is my USB cable that just connects to my computer when I send the actual designs over to be cut. Um, this right here, guys, this laser, I think I spent under $300 on it on eBay. I did buy some of these accessories for it. Uh, this is not important. This would be important, and this is important. Now, uh, the reason that air pump is so important is because it feeds through the actual laser and it blows out right here and, and see if you can hear that. But anyhow, as that laser is shooting down, it's moving any of the, uh, when it's burning that acrylic or paint that's on that panel, it's moving it out of the way. And if you don't do that, I, I hope you can see this, but let me see if I can get you a shot of this the right way. You can see this has, um, let me see you can let me see if I can get it there you see the burn marks it's it almost has a smoke ring around all the lettering and you can see where it's not polished off as well that is because around these edges the laser burned but it didn't have anything to um, like blow on it and this is before I set up the actual air and you may have to play with this a little bit to get it working perfectly but it'll remove out that ugly unnecessary blemish that will end up happening to all your panels that you know at night it doesn't matter because you get some really good panel panels with the backlighting but 
but that was uh, one of the biggest things I had to figure out. This next to it is just a laser beam for helping me know where my guides are. The other thing I did to set up my laser is a lot of people online have different theories on their trays. Uh, there's a generic tray that comes in it. I had to remove it because I want to, I actually want to cut a larger area, which if I had a piece of acrylic in here, I might be able to get four or five panels cut from one because of the size. And the original box that, th that this machine comes with is reduced down to where it'll barely hold one panel. So by opening this up and and you know I just bought this stuff at Home Depot but and cut it with it with clippers but uh, by opening this up I am able to basically put together about an 8 by 11 sheet of acrylic here and I can cut it um, I'll show you how I set this up that's just a simple L bracket that goes across the bottom and it builds a frame and then I'm able to just slide this in and then these I just bought online, but you could use any. I think those are about one inch, but I, I put them down like this. And I put this one in here, and that builds a, a second layer. Now, the reason I do this is there's a focal point on this laser. And that focal point is adjusted down to where it's the finest, finest tip point to cut or engrave on. And I have found that when I set up my laser this way... When, and I lay that panel down, it, it is a perfect focal point. And so it's real simple for me to just, you know, layer that down and then I could drop my panels on there. Now you'll notice I have some magnets here. These magnets help me to put down a piece of paper on here. Then if I want to secure it, I can drop the magnets on and I don't have to worry about using uh, painter's tape or anything like that, which I did in the past. And that, and I could just basically drop that over the piece of paper in all four corners, and then I can cut my first um, sample uh, panel out, and then make sure everything looks good before I put the acrylic down. And then once I put the acrylic down, you can also use these magnets to hold it in place as it's doing the cutting. And so, uh, very, very important. The other thing um, that I did on my laser setup is I. I have just a basic LED light here and I have that just piped right it's actually falling off since it's been an entire summer out here roasting but but uh, I just run it right into here and you'll see it can turn on or off based upon this little switch and uh, same with my laser and so forth um, when you're engraving and cutting and I'm telling you you're gonna get tempted but you have to clean this laser head and all you do to clean it is you unscrew this very bottom and you're going to want to use just some soft cloth like this and some basic alcohol and what will start happening is if that gets dirty you will not have those that clean lettering see how clean that lettering looks it's going to be all fuzzy it's going to look like a shotgun was uh, fired off to make the letter and it's going to be ugly but if you start seeing that happening it doesn't mean your machine is broken or or the the focal point on the laser is incorrect it basically nine times out of ten is going to mean that laser needs to be cleaned you're also going to need to watch a video on youtube of how to get your laser in focus by just making a few adjustments here not hard to do guys don't get too afraid when you see all this stuff this is actually real fun. Once you get it set up, you can actually start burning off your, your panels. But um, this little gadget here, this is just a little plastic tray. And I put a cookie, cookie tray on top of it. That's where I lay down my panels when I spray paint them. And I actually use just a Home Depot uh, gray paint that I paint them with. And, uh, and I let them dry. And I'll go over all that later. I do use a a pre-paint um, product that helps the paint stick to it and you end up getting a real nice finish when you're done uh, the only but that's tricky because uh, depending on how much dust is in the air or wind blowing around you might need to create like a little paint booth but anyhow the most important thing of all to have besides a fire extinguisher make sure you have one of those 
Um, I keep this right next to the machine and you never want to walk away from your machine and go in the house. You always want to have your eyes on, the, on it, not on the laser, but at least on the machine, making sure that you're not going to create any uh, dangerous fires or anything with it because uh, you'll find when you when you start doing your pre-cuts that you'll see in my other video there is a, I've had them catch on fire from time to time you can even see some of the smoke stains in here from burn from it burning and uh, and so you'll want to make sure you have your fire extinguisher but most importantly out of everything here make sure you have a good Mountain Dew to drink because that's going to make it all better hopefully you enjoyed this video guys and and it gives you some insight. In the next video, I'm gonna get into actually showing you the software and how I create the actual panel in the software and then how I feed this design into this machine and we actually cut it, paint it, and then engrave it. So you'll be able to see me do that. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, thanks.